sad that we live in a world where people take their politics personally and and use hatred and take it sometimes to people's homes. It's just not appropriate. We thought we'd talk to Lisa McLeod about this for a couple of reasons. We haven't talked to Lisa on the show in a long time, and she's been through it as a member of provincial parliament and cabinet minister in Ontario. She has experienced this kind of hatred uh, up close and uh, personal, and she's on the line now. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Good to talk to you again. I know you've been all, always very open about your personal struggles and difficulties, and I saw you at a wedding last summer, and you look great. You were in great spirits. I know with what you struggle with, that can be deceiving, but I hope you don't mind if I ask you how you're doing these days. Uh, I'm doing well. I had a, a pretty profound dip back in uh, October, November, so we changed the medication. And I have to say, I've been probably about two months where it's just been really good and stable. And so um, so thank you for asking. And to anybody else that's struggling, uh, make sure you get some help. Um, it's always out there. There's, sh- there's no shame, no stigma. Um, that's in our minds. And uh, we can get through it together. And so I'm getting through it. And I just this week had uh, 25 meetings with community uh, organizations like all of our hospitals, um, all of our uh, universities and colleges and all of the school boards uh, to talk about Ottawa priorities as we move forward. So uh, back in the saddle and uh, feeling pretty confident. And um, But I will say the topic that we're talking about today was a large contributor to, to how things uh, got into a, a crisis with me because uh, there are people out there that want to suppress politicians' voices when they don't agree. And How bad did it get? There. You want to walk us through that as best you can? Uh, for me, okay, so, sure. So it started probably in February of 2019, and I was under police protection for about five, six months, um, you know, to the point where I would have, uh, you know, the police pick me up, OPP would pick me up at my house here in Ottawa, um, hand me over basically to the Ottawa police who would, at the airport, who would walk me onto the plane, and uh, when I got off the plane, the OPP would be there to take me to work. Um, some days the threats were, you know, evolving. I'd be walking out of cabinet, um, walking out of my office, and uh, there would be OPP, legislative security, and all my staff would come, and I'd be like, what's going on now? And they said, you know, we can't, um, you know, assure, your, assure you of your safety right now which is frightening um, because when you go to work, you think you're going to be safe. And so it was very scary for me. Um, and, and I basically stopped you know, going out and it led to my first issue of, um, I, I guess I went into psychosis because I just didn't feel safe ever. Um, then it just, it just continued until the, basically the pandemic, a woman had threatened to kill me. I was pretty explicit about it. She was arrested and um, incarcerated three times um, because it was that serious. And then um, during the election, before I ended up in my mental health crisis, um, the police, the Ottawa police came and spoke to my husband and said that they had a credible threat. They couldn't assure me of my safety. We had to, um, we had to figure out either an evacuation plan if something went awry oh, or a shelter in place. And so, the, 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 you know, you really want to be able to speak your mind and, and be elected based on your ideas. But what gets really scary, Bill, is the fact that you don't know the face of the person that's threatening you. They know yours. And that's a pretty scary situation. So this, this is what happened to me. You probably tried initially to say to yourself, well, people are just venting. It happens. They're they're just trying to shake me up. They're probably not serious. Hard to do that when security officials, experts say to you, no, this is a credible threat. That that must have sent a chill up and down your spine the first time you heard those words. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's, it, it's, it's you get threats from time to time for sure, but it's when, when the police come to you and basically say, you know, we can't assure you of your safety. You're like, what is going on? I'm from Canada. Like, <laughs> this is this doesn't happen here. This is, um, and then you expect you just really do in your heart of hearts believe that even politicians from opposite parties will defend you. And in my case, I had a number of people that say, well, you deserve it. 
and and I and I, I think it's very difficult for women. I think it's very difficult for conservative women, and that's why I think with with Melissa Lanceman, it just it, it just hit so close to home. And of course, I I've been very vocal in my support of Israel and my support of the Jewish community. Um, and so it just is even more heartbreaking to see somebody try to suppress her voice and silence her. What is it like to live with all those uniforms around you all the time? You must also have mixed feelings about that. You're you're glad to have their presence, but the fact that you need them, it it has to actually add to the the feeling of insecurity. I I don't know. I haven't lived it, but you have. What what was that like? Well, it it feels like your head is in a fishbowl, a very, very small fishbowl, and you can't breathe because you don't know if they're not there um, what could happen. The other challenge you have is, you know, for me, I would be in Toronto, and my husband and my daughter would be in Ottawa. And at this point in time, when the protests were big, um, they, you know, my my the address was well known, and so we had to notify my daughter's school, for example. And so it doesn't just become about you as a public figure in the face of whatever policy or, um, you know, whatever people are protesting. It, it becomes about your family, and, and you drag them into this, and it's frightening. We actually have protesters, when I was under OPP protection, um, chase me and my daughter. And, like, the OPP were shocked that people would be that bold. Um, but they are, and there's no boundaries. And so, in my opinion, Bill, you know, not only do we need strong voices like yours to stand up and say, you know, this is not, this is not right, we also need all politicians of all stripes when it comes across, whether it's Jagmeet Singh or, um, or whether it's Kathleen Wynne or whether it's, you know, D- Doug Ford. You just have to say that's not acceptable because you cannot embolden people who want to break the law in order to harm a public office holder. Well, and I think one of the most important things we have to do as media in this situation is humanize the people. Uh, on the other on the other end of this the threats because uh, listen I can be very critical of politicians it's kind of job description for me but I guess there's a line you can't cross and it, there's a clear line when you start to threaten people so it's good to remember that Lisa McLeod is a wife and a mother and a human being and you were affected and your family was affected d- deeply by these threats and it doesn't get it doesn't change anything politically it's not. You, you and your government were going to do what you thought was right, and you're not going to be intimidated. So, you know, it has no no effect for the people doing it except to make them look bad. Well, yeah, and I think the, that's the – you just said that you hit the nail on the head. It's intimidation. It's harassment. It's, it's trying to suppress a politician's voice and their actions. And the reality is, you know, we have every four years an ability to send a message – to a politician and it's at the ballot box and you know i've been fortunate to win six elections uh which is the long most of anybody in the city of ottawa um except for pierre polyev and Dave, dalton david mcginty and so it, it, it they can suppress me but it just be, it just becomes tough like two weeks ago i had another threat the opp con t- contacted me um and then a couple days on one issue and then a couple days later my office door was vandalized and I'm thinking, do you also know that we have staff that are affected by this, that, you know, don't get paid to deal with these types of threats? Like, they, they, they don't make a lot of money. They just work hard because they believe. And so when you vandalize my door or whatever at the office, chances are I'm not going to see it. It's going to be the first person at the office, which is a staffer. I'm like, it's like, what, what is the point of all of this? I think we all need to stand up, and I, you know, I've been pretty vocal about it my, my entire career. I always defend anybody that is is being threatened, and I'll continue to do that, even if it's an opposing uh, voice uh, for me, because I just I've been through it, I've seen it, my staff has gone through it, and uh, my family's seen it, and my mother, God bless her, in her 70s, she came up for my last election from Nova Scotia. She just couldn't believe, you know. There was at one point a, a, a police car outside of our house. Like it just, it just offends the sensibilities of normal, rational people. Thanks for your time this morning, Lisa. We appreciate it. Thanks, Bill. Take care.